This video is going to cover some Excel basics for business analysis. It is meant to be a high-level video. There's going to be many Excel topics throughout the course, and we'll introduce things as we need to. So those of you who are proficient in Excel don't feel like you need to continue with this video. It really is meant for those who have not worked in Excel or have just done it a few times a year and just kind of want to see what we'll be getting to throughout the course. So we're going to go ahead and open up an Excel document. And when I look at it, we'll notice that it's definitely a Microsoft product. So I have my tabs, my file, home, insert, page layout, and so on and so forth across the top of the screen. As I click on each of those, I'm going to get different views. So I'm going to go through those and point out these are the ones that by the end of the course you should know how to use. And file. Obviously, that's going to be an important one. Save, save as, open and close, create a new document, print it, and then exiting out, out of the program. The Home tab, you will be hopefully very proficient in and will have used almost everything on this tab. So whether it's cut, copy, or paste, changing the font and or color, the alignments, specifying what sort of data type it is, or just inserting, deleting, columns, so you could insert a column, a row, a worksheet, a cell, so lots of different things there, same thing with deleting. And then these common editing functions are ones that you will use fairly often. On the Insert tab, starting in Chapter 2, we're going to be covering pivot tables. No need to panic on that now, we'll get to those if you don't have any idea what they are. We'll also be using the charts and graphs that are available to us here. At some point, we may end up using some of these special symbols, but that's going to be kind of cursory if you happen to be able to do those. Kudos. Page layout, we won't be using much for this course because you won't be printing many of the documents that you create. You're actually going to be cutting a section of your worksheet and copying it into an ex a Microsoft Word document for your homework. But for other courses, you can use this for margins, orientation, size, layout, so your page set up for your printing purposes. On the Formulas tab, we will certainly be using this quite a bit when we're getting to Chapter 3. Our Data tab, there are some things on here that it would be nice to know how to use by the end of the semester, especially this Refresh All, our Sort Features, and our Filter Features. We're also going to install the data analysis pack and use that in the course. If it's not there now, don't worry about it. On review, good idea to spell check your work if you happen to be typing some pieces in it. We won't be using view a lot, but if you happen to open a document that looks strange, you can actually go in here and, because if I do a page break view, or if I do a layout view, it certainly changes how it looks, so I can put it back on normal. So if you open up a document like, this doesn't look like anything I've worked on, it's a simple way to get it back to what you're used to looking at. And then you can change the zoom on here. Other than that, we won't be using the view feature as often. We have the developer, we won't be using that at all this semester, and we have add-ins, which at some point later in the semester, we're going to be adding pH stats, but no need to worry about that right now. You probably won't have contribute on yours. It happens to be a product that's on my PC, so it shows up here. The next thing to pay attention to is this next layout. So we have a worksheet. And in our worksheet, we have data and text. I'm going to come back to that. The next thing down is we have tabs along the bottom down here. These are going to be called worksheets. So worksheet 2.1 is the one we're viewing right now, and I just have to click on any of these to look at the other ones. So you don't have to have all of your data sets in different saved files you can go ahead and have them in tabs or worksheets in the same one. And then last but not least, you can scroll on your side, you can scroll, scroll over here. If you want to change how well you can see it, you can change your view along here. So that's, those are some of the basics that we're going to need to know for right now. 
The one thing I, additionally that I want to show you in this video is how to undo and redo. So we're going to go ahead and click this Home tab because it's the best place to find yourself most of the time. So we're going to be on the Home tab and you'll notice that we have A1 as highlighted as a 5. So A1 shows a 5 right here. If I were to click on A7, it would go ahead and make that A7. And if I were to type in a number such as 32, it appears in both places. There will be some times in the future where this is a name box. So this is actually listed as something else and not as A7. So don't panic if it doesn't show A7, but at the moment, it's perfectly fine just to leave it as the default with A7, A8. So if I type in a number such as 15 and hit enter, it goes down by one. If I hit 22, it goes down by one. If I want to go over and up, I can either use my mouse or my arrow keys. So I can go ahead and with my arrow keys, move it there and type in 85 and 45. So typing and moving information in here isn't that difficult. But let's say I want to undo the last two entries. I can either use the undo feature up at the top or I can do control Z. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and do control Z. Say I want to undo it again, control Z. If you're not a keyboard fan, you can use the undo, undo there. Now let's say I want to redo these. So I can either do control Y or I can do redo, redo. Another way to delete information is you can just highlight over it. So I just went ahead and clicked on A7 and I highlighted over the top of those and I can hit the delete key and it'll take them away. So our other features up here are insert, delete, and format. So if I wanted to insert a row at the top, I could notice when I went across here, I did insert and it inserted a row all the way across. And let's say I want to insert a column right here. So I'm going to go to A, I'm going to highlight it, and I'm going to go insert, and it went ahead and inserted it. So if I want to undo those, I can do Control Z and Control Z twice, because I did two things and I undid both of them. Now within these spreadsheets, there are times that we're going to want to make sure that every thing in our data is in one column. So we're going to go ahead and say, I want to copy this down one area. So we have Control X, Control C, and Control V. Cut, copy, paste. They are on the same area of your keyboard. So Control X, Control C, Control V, you'll see is right next to each other. They're also cut, copy, and paste is right here. I tend to use the shortcut keys with the control X. So I'm going to highlight this range. I clicked on B1. I held my mouse down, my left button down. When I release it, I have this section. So I'm going to do control X. I want to click on A6, control V. I want to control X and I want to control V. I want to control X and control V. And let's say on this one, I just want to move it. So we can go ahead and on the box on the outside, I can move it there. So that was that one thing that you had just seen me do accidentally just a second ago, but it didn't do any harm because I moved it back where I started. So now I have my data in one nice column. So undo, redo, cut, copy, paste, more in future videos.